Hi guys. So now we can continue with the course and we can move to our next topic called standard costing. Standard costing again is a very important topic emphasized in the examination syllabus and you guys can expect many questions on this topic. So now let's start with standard costing. What is standard costing essentially? So standard costing is a simple technique that determines what a resource should cost or how much does the firm expect it to cost? So we'll first use the preparation of budgeted or predetermined cost to help us calculate variances. Now, what are variances? We compare our budgeted cost with what was the actual cost incurred. So standard costing basically helps a firm in understanding or comparing what it actually expected the cost of a resource versus what was the actual cost. So firms can manage their efficiency over here they can compare this and using that they can calculate their variances. So some of the reasons why the budgeted cost can actually differ from the actual cost can be stated over here. The first reason could be the number of units or the quantity of goods produced may be more or less. For example, a firm budgeted to produce 5,000 units but it ended up producing 7,000 units. So because of that, you can expect your budgeted cost and actual cost to differ. The cost of material can increase. You can expect more kgs to be consumed in a unit or let's say a kg could become more expensive as well. Workers, your workers may be more or less efficient. If they are efficient workers, they might finish your job earlier. If they're less efficient, they might take longer hours. That will again increase your labor cost, right? The wage rate can also increase. It can be more or less. And because of that, it will also affect the your actual labor cost, which will be different from your budgeted cost, right? So in this topic, what we have to focus is we have to compare the efficiency of the firm by the budgeted cost, the budget set out by the firm at the start and compare it with actually what happened. And the differences will be called variances. So we'll name them to be variances over here. And standard costing is used by many different businesses, but it's most commonly used in manufacturing businesses where it's very essential to compare your budgeted and actual cost and a firm should have control over it. So what can be some of the advantages of using standard costing? We can say, firstly, the preparation of budgets make it easier, right? You can then base your standard cost and your budgets can be realistic. The differences can be highlighted, remember, you'll be able to calculate variances. Now these activities that are responsible for variances can be highlighted. We can think of it like this. So the sales manager will be responsible for meeting his budgeted sales target. So if for any reason, the actual sales units are less than your budgeted sales unit, we can blame or we can shift this responsibility to the sales manager as to why he could not fulfill the target set out. And that could be then given through an explanation, but it will help you understand the reason why your profits are different than what you expected, right? So standard costing essentially becomes a very essential part of responsibility accounting where every department is responsible for their activities. And obviously these budgets and these expected costs will always help you in determining the selling price We've seen that in absorption costing and also quotation for orders can be determined by using the principle of standard costing. Finally, budgets and standard costing are also part of giving out targets. They can motivate your staff, something that we've discussed earlier in budgeting. Your rewards can be based on that. The efficiency is compared by variances. So someone with positive variances can be rewarded accordingly. However, standards could also lead to demotivation if the targets are not realistic or appropriate. We need to note that standards must be realistic and should not be misleading. So the staff and the management should have clear directions given to them, something that also encourages them, but also does not make them feel that it is impossible to achieve. Right now, what are some of the standards we need to know of? We can, we can talk about the idle standards, the current standards and attainable standards. What's the difference between them? Idle standards are those that are prepared under idle conditions. These are unrealistic. They do not account for wastages or anything else. 
these standards can demotivate your managers all right current standards are basically the present level of of performance for the firm they might be inappropriate for the future why am i saying that because if you want the firm to just follow what has happened presently there will be no motivation to improve their performance further so current standards do not offer them any incentive to perform more efficiently now what are attainable standards attainable standards are those unlike the idle standards they will account for any wastages some hours might not be productive as well so these standards might be more realistic as well and will also provide some level of motivation amongst the management okay now what this topic will essentially discuss or what we will learn in this topic i can say is the concept of variances variance is essentially the difference between the standard cost and the actual cost or even in terms of revenue the budgeted revenue and actual revenue so in this chapter we'll take a look at sales variances how do we determine the difference between budgeted sales and actual sales the causes of that direct material the difference between budgeted or expected direct material cost with versus actual direct material cost expected labor cost versus actual labor cost and even for overheads so we will also see that fixed overheads can also have variances because your expected fixed cost can be different from actual fixed cost or you can even absorb more fixed cost or you can also under absorb fixed cost right so variances will help us understand the differences and these differences can be analyzed their their causes will be determined which will also give a direction to the firm as to how to improve this in the future